Hey everyone, welcome back to Workshop Quick Takes. Today I'm going to be doing a trailer wiring harness install on a 2000 Jeep Cherokee. This here is a kit I got online. I got it from eTrailer.com. There are other sources, but I've generally found their products and service to be of good quality, so I'm going to keep using them for the time being. Not a sponsor. This here has an inline wiring harness, and it is supposed to insert cleanly between a couple of the connectors that are back here. And then, of course, it comes out as a four flat. I don't need a seven way on this vehicle. Mostly I intend to use probably a basket, maybe a light trailer now and then, but I do want to have this installed so that it's a little bit easier to connect on the fly. This spot right back here is a bracket that holds major wiring connectors for the rear body harness. Normally in the OE installation, there are a couple just little push in barbed rivets there, but I did push button rivets in a previous modification so that it would be easier to get to later. So I'm gonna start by removing those. And it looks like I'm replacing at least one of those. Make that too, because why not? In any case, there it is. Based on the connector, fairly sure this is supposed to intercept this one here. This vehicle did not come with the trailer towing package, but I do see the same number of wires in and out on both harnesses, so hopefully we get lucky. Finally, this wire also needs to be connected to a ground point. I have one right here. If all went well, that should be sufficient for a complete install, but I really have no idea, so I'm going to have to test it. First step is to go ahead and make sure all the existing lights work the way they did before. Okay, so plugging it in like that is easily, and so far nothing bad has happened. But now we need a way of testing this. You can get a small little tester kit if you like, but I've also got a lift basket that I just put on some uh, trailer lighting for fun. So let's try that instead. Now I know this basket is wired correctly because I've previously tested it on another vehicle. So let's see if we get parking lights, brake lights, and turn signals. Hazard lights working. Parking lights working. Okay, brake light's working. Doesn't get much more complete than that. Last step then is to go ahead and install this permanently. Okay, let's figure out roughly how this is going to mount under here. See, this is a screw hole, which I'm not gonna make exact exact, but it's gonna be somewhere right about there. A little tip when you're drilling, magnets and tape can be a two great ways to help keep filings from going just everywhere, when you're working with steel at least. If it's aluminum, then of course the magnet's not gonna work, but the tape still will. I just really hate steel filings because they get in everything. Check that out. Would have had to vacuum all that up, but the tape saved it me from having to clean up a mess from who knows where it would have gone. The box will be going here, but first, I'm going to take some loom tubing and tape and just cover up some of this other area over here so that hopefully I'm less likely to get any kind of future fault between a wire that's chafed and the chassis of the vehicle. You know what? It's a whole lot better if I can actually fold it. Okay, and then from here, I'm going to do the same thing coming back down to here-ish. Since I don't need a ground on this point, I'll just take a little bit of this uh, black nail polish and goth up my Jeep here. Black paint would be fine too, but this stuff dries really fast and it forms a nice hard shell. We are now 0.5% less likely to lose this Jeep from rust. All right, wiring done. So I guess the only thing left to do is peel the sticky back here and loop this under. This now needs to loop down and around.
Okay. It looks like there's a factory grommet right here I need to run through, and then I'm home free getting out, so I'll have to remove the tail light here in a bit to do that. But first, let's finish putting this part together and get all our wiring over here tucked back in. Okay, in order to improve my odds of being able to hold a lock nut back behind there, I'm going to use this vice grips. We'll see if I can actually fit it in there behind the gas assembly. Nope. And I that's, can. This is, that's like. wrong. Okay. I should keep it from rattling loose. Final step then is to reattach this little mess. I think it would be useful to grab some of these wires as well. Okay, that's everything inside the car. Now we need to come out here. All right, let's take a look at the tail light and see if this grommet is what we think it is. Okay. Yeah, we got something there. Well, there it is. And judging by the size of that hole, I would say that was indeed meant to pass through a four flat connector. So, I guess the only thing to do next is to actually cut a passage in it and try and feed the connector through. Okay, good. So now I just need a zip tie back here. So I think I'm gonna have to do a little cutout. From this point forward, the rest of the job involves wrapping up the harness wire and securing it behind the bumper somewhere. You get to choose the level of care used to secure the wiring, but chafe wiring a couple years down the road is a great way to tear out your hair for an afternoon or three, so choose your level of effort wisely. Later, we also came back and moisture-proofed the body grommet with black RTV silicone. The trailer hitch hasn't been used much in the first year since install, but when needed, it's been a good thing to have, and a hitch isn't fully useful without proper trailer wiring. Fortunately, with the available OE-style control box that plugs directly into the factory loom, this isn't too difficult other than the three or four interior panels that have to be removed to access the wiring loom bracket. That's about all for today's episode. Thanks for joining us again on Workshop Quick Takes. See you again next time, whenever that is. Has anyone seen my phone?